Hey there, clay addicts and potential clay addicts. It's me, Melanie, from Mud Girl Pottery, uh, sitting in my studio, Mud Clay Studio, here in New Jersey. Our new session started this week, and I realized that there's some basics people need to remember. So I'm going to throw just the basic cylinder and talk about some pro tips to make that basic cylinder work out straight using all of the clay. Let's go. Okay guys, so pro tip number one. A lot of people believe that you should start with a ball of clay. The problem with starting with a ball is that you really only have this point that will be touching the bat. So what I started to start with is more of an avocado or Yukon gold potato. Little points here up on top, a little flatter on the bottom. This way it assures that when you place your clay on the bat, you don't have any spaces here that can create an air tunnel. So with all of our beginners, I really only start with a few tools. A wood tool, a round sponge, this one's a little bit of a moon, and a pin tool, and a bat. I'll also use a wooden rib, a plate rib, and a wire tool. I like to have my bucket filled about three quarters of the way up. This way, when I'm dipping my hands in, I'm not just doing my fingertips, but I'm dipping my entire hand. So we wanna start with that ball right in the center. I also don't suggest wetting the bat first underneath your clay. The bat is usually made of masonite, so it's gonna want a little bit of moisture, so it's gonna drink it out of that pot and hopefully make it stick. If you put too much water underneath, it may cause um, it to slip and act like a lubricant, and then the clay is never gonna stick. So when I center, I lock my F left elbow into my hip bone. This makes my left arm, or my less dominant hand, the same strength as our right hand. I recently learned that our less dominant side is 10% less, has 10% less strength than our dominant hand. So we want to put even pressure here and even pressure here. And the only way we're really going to do that is by really locking in and locking our elbow in. So I start with my wheel going about 70 miles an hour. And I'm going to start, my left hand is not pushing in, but my right hand is just pushing down gently to make it sick that's gonna create sort of a seal down here on the bottom. I prefer not to seal it right away because my clay not, may not be in the middle. And if my clay is not in the middle, now I'm sealing it off center and that's just gonna make it harder. So with a smaller piece of clay like this, about a pound and a half, I don't always need to cone, but sometimes I will. But first I'm gonna put my left palm. So my left palm is at a six, six o'clock, right in front of my belly. And my right hand is really pushing down just on one quarter here. It looks like I'm pushing across, but I'm putting all of my weight here to here. My wheel's gonna start to go super fast, locking my elbows onto my legs. And I'm gonna push in and down, cleaning off any sort of extra stuff that may be stuck. If I just quietly leave my hands here, putting even pressure on my left palm, which is being supported by my left hip pushing forward, and my right hand, the clay should eventually listen to me. You don't wanna move your hands all over the place. I'm starting to drop my right wrist a little, allowing the crease from here to here to help me create this round shape here. If you tend to get a nipple or a little piece sticking up in the middle, it's usually because the end of your pinky or the ends of your hand is not quite in the center. By pushing up, the clay wants to go up. Now, if I do wanna to decide to cone up, it's not doing this. If I do this, I'm just gonna jump on the clay and the clay is gonna tell me where I wanna go. I wanna put my left palm back at that six o'clock position and I wanna take my right four fingers, including my pinky down here on the bottom, and I wanna put even pressure between one and two o'clock and six and five, uh, six and seven o'clock. When I push towards the center, the clay has nowhere else to go but up, so I'm then gonna follow it up and close up my hand. Now. Some of you may end up with that little volcano down there. My opinion is if you start to squish from the bottom and you slowly close that volcano up, you should be in good shape. Now I'm gonna to start to cone down again, which is the same thing I was doing down on the bottom, but I'm dealing with much smaller pieces of clay. So up here, if I slowly take my hands off, now that clay is centered. Go down a little bit more, slowly take my hands off, that's centered. 
Now I keep saying slowly because if I get it centered, let's go ahead and get this part centered here, and I take my hands up quickly, it throws it off center. So everything is gentle. Now when I get down to the bottom, I'm kind of going back to that position I was in, in the earlier on before I coned. Even pressure. Oh, big chunky piece came out of there. There's always a blooper. Even pressure on my left palm, pushing with my left hip, and even pressure on my right hand. And if I sit here and sort of hang out for a little bit, slowly take my hands off, my clay is centered. Now, what happens if you get these sort of ripply fingerprints here from putting too much pressure on all your fingers like that? What I tend to do is I keep my fingers at an angle and I take my pinky out of the equation. My pinky is super curly. So that, if I use that, I'm gonna end up with that shape and that's not gonna help me. But if I angle my ring finger at a 30 degree angle and that fingertip is touching the bat, it sort of sh serves to clean up that bottom without putting too much of a dent in it. So our desired shape, sort of like a rounded cat food can or I don't know, that shape. Okay. So the next step is to open up. Now, as a beginner, I like to do what I think is the easiest way. I rest my hands down on the bat, not really hard. You don't want to scrape this up with the grog. You want to take your right thumb or two thumbs and you want to push them close together. And you're going to drive your thumbs down. Do not lift your elbows off of your body. If you lift your elbows up in the body, See, the clay is going to take you for a ride. Wrap my hands around, take two thumbs, and literally drive your thumbs close together. If you separate your thumbs, you're going to get that piece of clay kind of shooting up in the middle. Now, at this point, we want to decide to foot or not to foot. It seems very far away that we're going to be making the foot, but we want to plan it now. If we leave it thick enough, we'll have room for a good foot. If we push down a little farther, we want to make sure we account for that wire tool that's going to take a little bit off. When we are making a foot, we want to make a foot that serves a purpose. Don't put a foot on something just for the sake of having a ring of clay on the bottom. You want it to either be a substantial size so that you can use that to lift your sculpture off the table, or you want it to be a substantial size so that you have a safety zone for glaze. So I'm going to go for a foot. Now that may seem like it's super thick, but you have to account for the wire tool taking a little bit off the thickness of your actual pot, and then the good foot that you want that's gonna be a safe spot for you not to put glaze. Next, we wanna open up, and we wanna put our fingers close together, and we wanna drive them straight towards our left palm. We wanna go straight as to not make it thinner down closer to the wall, but we also want to not put a lot of pressure on this hand because then the clay starts to squeeze and we go up. So I'm gonna make my wheel go top speed and I'm gonna pull straight towards my palm. Now, you can only go as wide as your mound of clay allows. If you pull all the way out here, it's going to make the wall become the floor. Do you see how we go straight across and that we've already set our pot up to have a square bottom? Now, a lot of people get distracted by all those little lines in the middle. We're gonna get rid of those by compressing our floor. Okay, so as I said, there are these little lines in there that bother people. We're gonna squeeze our sponge out, we're gonna hold out really tight, and we're just gonna push down on the floor of our pot, just in one spot, to get rid of those lines if it bothers you, and to just compress the floor. This will stop any S cracks from happening. Not necessarily stress fractures, which we could discuss in another video, but the S cracks. So now it's time to pull the walls. So our wheel was going 100 miles an hour before, and now we want to pull down to about 70 miles an hour. We want to fill our sponge with water. And what I actually do is you could do, I teach people either one of two things, a finger taco. So here's your shell and here's your meat. And your sponge sorts as it ser serves as a barrier between your finger and the pot, but always provides water. Or a sponge sandwich. So your fingers are the bread and the sponge, filled with water is the meat. 
So notice my hands are attached, my thumb is over and touching my hand. I'm gonna start down on the bat here. My first goal is to straighten this out. If I put even pressure on this, chances are my lip is gonna get super thin and I'm gonna get super thin. So I'm gonna start down here, no real pressure. And now I'm gonna put a lot of pressure. Notice my hands are attached and my elbows are on my body. And now I'm gonna loosen up on that pressure. So now what I've done is I have now made an evenly consistent wall so that I don't have to think about it so much as I'm pulling the wall. I'm going to hold on to the lip gently and compress it with my finger. I'm gonna start down on the bottom again. I'm gonna do a little scoop. And what I'm actually doing, it's hard for you guys to see, is I'm looking at the outside of my pot. If I look at the outside of my pot, I'm less likely to have my hands go out this way. And if my hands start to go towards the outside, I'm going to create a bowl. So now, I, when I am pulling up my, my walls, I'm actually using my fingertips. I use my pointer backed up by my middle finger. This makes my finger stronger. Or I use my middle backed up by my pointer. I notice when it's low, I use my pointer. As I start to get a little taller, I use my middle finger, obviously because it's a little longer. So I'm gonna start down on the bottom. My wheel slow down just a little bit so I can scoop that up. And now you can see that ring of clay. You can see my middle finger there peeking through until I get to the top. Now I'm gonna leave my lip a little thicker. I'm gonna take care of that near the end. Compress my lip. Now, I will only get the water out of my pot a few times. The more that you wipe down on your bottom, the more grog is going to appear. So one of the important things when you're putting a lot of pressure on your outside hand, you wanna make sure that your inside hand is sort of holding its ground. If you want the inside of your cylinder to be four inches wide, you need to keep your hand at that four inches position because as you scoop up, if you don't put counter pressure on your inside, you're gonna end up sort of with a tornado. So now the most important part is to get all of that clay into your pot. So I'm gonna sit down there, I'm gonna scoop it up. I'm pushing it underneath the walls that really exist. So I'm almost jacking up the wall that I already have. I want you to notice the straight lines. And now I'm gonna put a little more pressure on my lip to thin that out a little. And now I'm gonna compress the lip. So you will notice that I'm not going completely straight. Sometimes we take a little breath and it'll go in a little bit and then out a little bit. So that is where we're gonna add an extra tool to this event, the plate rib. So I'm gonna wet this side of it. To me, this side is a bit too much to pay attention to, so I only work on this side. I wet that, I put it up against the side of my pot to where I want that wall to end up. I start down on the bottom and I start to push from the inside up. I've now hit the top of that tool and now my hand and my tool are gonna travel up. I'm gonna take my thumb out of my pot so that I can attach it to my hand. One tool, which is two hands attached, is better than two tools. And I'm gonna go until my tool comes off of the pot. If I go ahead and push and push and push and push, and then I abruptly take that off, chances are this slip is gonna make this stick to it and it's gonna come pulling out. So we wanna make sure, notice when I went back in, I started a little lower than where I ended. We come all the way off of the pot. It's gonna be hard for me to see the side, probably from the video, be able to see if that's straight or not. So now what I wanna do is we have an expression here at the studio, it's call it a pot. So when we say call it a pot, it means just stop touching the pot. It means that you really can't do much more to it. So you've got to stop touching it and just hope for the best. Okay, got that in there. So now the next step is to trim this excess off. Now the goal of your cylinder is to not have very much there. I have a little bit more than I would have desired. When I'm showing it online, I tend to move a little slower and I think too much. So I'll end up leaving a little bit too much. Now, a lot of people find this part really tricky. Some people use this. I think that this is way too big. It's like making pinstripes on a piece of paper with a big fat Sharpie. I think you don't have the control and unless this is really sharp, you're never gonna get that clean edge. This wood tool, on the other hand, if I use the side of my 
of this blade here. Hold on to it two hands, start up here, and then I drive it in and come up and out. That's actually, like I said, quite a bit of clay to leave behind that I don't like to do, but at least it gets most of it off. Now, why do we trim that off? We trim that off because if we have thick corners of our pots and the bottom of our pot is thin, the bottom of our pot is gonna dry a little faster than those thick edges. And it's gonna have to shrink and it's gonna have to go somewhere. So what happens is you start to stress the clay out. The bottom part here has to go somewhere when it contracts and uh, shrinks, so it's gonna pull here or here to the two thicker spots. And that's gonna cause what we call a stress fracture. You're literally stressing the clay out. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut our cylinder in half and see what happened here. So wire tools are very hard to come by. They kink very often, so I'll keep a, lot, a roll of fishing line near me. The thinner, the better. The thinner the fishing line, the less clay you're gonna take off at the bottom. So here we go. Wrap it around, pull that straight up. Let's take a look. Hmm. All right, not so happy, but like I said, I tend to pay attention less. I tend to, it's a little harder for me when I'm doing a video. So what I would have liked is if for me to have gotten rid of that little bump right there. That little bump right there would have gotten me, let's see if I stretch that out a little. would have gotten me that much more height. Isn't that interesting to see how one little thick spot would have jacked up the wall to give yourself a little bit more height. So the goal of learning how to really throw is to make sure that you're using all of your clay and you're using a consistency so that you can continue to make similar mugs or pots and get as many pieces out of your bag as you can. So ideally, what we would wanna do is have it a little bit more the same. But let me show you how I throw the pot, considering now you can see the cross section. So I have my fingers curled like this, my hands are attached here, and I'm literally scooping the clay up. I'm not leaning my fingers. If you lean your fingers down, you'll end up with a bowl. And you're never doing this. You never wanna to touch with all these fingers. You're gonna confuse the clay by pushing all those fingers. So you wanna go up and up and up, and my inside hand is just a smidge higher than my outside hand. My sponge is in my hand to keep my clay wet, and I come all the way up to the top and compress the lip. So that's it, not the best cylinder, but that's our goal. So that's it, that's a cylinder. I really recommend that you sit down one day, make yourself 10 to 12, one to one and a quarter pound balls, and just continuously throw cylinders. Center five balls of clay, go back and pull and pull, cut them open, check out how your progress is going. Once you perfect that cylinder, you can do any shape you want. So before you jump to four pounds, five pounds, sexy pots, lidded pots, giant fruit bowls, perfect that cylinder. Once you've got it in your muscles and in your body, you'll be able to do anything. So keep on throwing those cylinders, keep on cutting them open, and please subscribe to my Mud Girl Pottery YouTube channel, and there'll be some more new videos coming out with pro tips, and common mistakes. Have a great day.